Greenland ice sheet rainfall exemplifies how climatology has been undergoing a paradigm shift. Our attention is now a lot less focused on the gradually upward creeping averages. Extremes in weather are increasingly disrupting our world and dominating the climate conversation. So here I'm presenting some of the key results from a philosophical journey, one in which I returned to my graduate student years, nerding about astrophysical, planetary, and atmospheric sciences in my home state at the University of Colorado Boulder. This latest philosophical deep dive that I'm presenting here is now published in a special issue on reanalysis applications in the UK Royal Meteorological Society's journal, Meteorological Applications. This study was laser focused on gaining new insight about rainfall increasingly falling on the Greenland ice sheet. The story begins in 2016 when I convinced my colleagues at the Geological Survey of Denmark and Greenland to put rain gauges on our Greenland ice sheet weather, climate, and glaciology recorder installations. In 2018, examining the second year of data, I saw a huge 200 millimeter rain total recorded over 36 hours on the southern ice sheet at 2,200 feet elevation midway up the zone of net melting. Thanks to the Copernicus Arctic Regional Reanalysis, the study presents the most detailed and accurate rainfall maps for Greenland that have ever been seen. The climate reanalysis background video I made to support this video is linked below. The study also measures a 33% increase in rainfall on the ice sheet since 1991. Here, I'll focus on how common extreme rainfall is. For example, a foot of rain in a given day. A foot of rain in one day is an insane amount of water. In Japan, one and one third feet of rain fell in Kumur on the 10th of July, 2023. July, 2023 flooding in Vermont had up to two thirds of a foot of rain. Here in Copenhagen, the 2nd of July 2011, a cloudburst delivered half a foot of rainfall, causing thousands of injuries and costing the insurance companies 5 billion kroner or $700 million, mainly from destroyed property, from flooded basements and businesses. There is strong theoretical evidence that the frequency and or intensity of extreme rainfall increases with global temperature from the nonlinear increase in the moisture holding capacity of air with temperature. I found that since 1991, there have been 16 cases with daily rainfall somewhere on the Greenland ice sheet exceeding 300 millimeters. The single event I detailed here was ranked second for total ice sheet rainfall. The amount of rainfall that day would run the Thames River for two years. The work became a more and more detailed study of an atmospheric river making landfall on Greenland. Atmospheric rivers are not just important for delivering crazy amounts of rainfall and snow to places like California, but for delivering heat and consequently rain instead of snow to not only Greenland, but even Antarctica, where in March of 2022, temperatures spiked incredibly. The main impact of extreme rainfall on the ice sheet is the surrounding warm air wiping out snow cover and revealing dark bare ice and darkening of the remaining snow at the higher elevations. The dark snow effect is from the rounding of ice crystal edges and when followed by sunny conditions, elevated melting becomes sustained for days or even another week when otherwise snow would have brightened the surface protecting the underlying ice from melting. So what's really new here? Atmospheric river rapids. Strong and extensive updraft structures embedded within an atmospheric river. Besides the mass conservation that produces the wind flow splitting and acceleration around southern Greenland, buoyancy is generated aloft by condensation. The condensation of H2O gas into water droplets releases heat into the surroundings, providing a continual source of buoyancy 
that maintains these structures along flow. The magenta line illustrates the span of vertical profiles in CARA data from the surface up to 8 kilometers above ground. The colored areas indicate vertical winds. Red means updraft areas. Blue, downdraft. At this position, we see along an atmospheric river rapid, beginning slightly upstream from the updraft jet that arcs around southern Greenland 40 to 100 kilometers offshore. Along this atmospheric river rapid, updrafts continue for 250 kilometers all the way to the ice sheet and are enhanced over the ice sheet from the combined effect of terrain uplift and buoyant uplift. The atmospheric flow is from south to north and it is strong, above 25 meters per second in most areas. This is fast flow, above 100 feet per second. The vertical profile steps through the Kara data, 2.5 kilometers at a time, spanning across the area of southern Greenland where the atmospheric river rapids appear. In the west-east profile, scanning northward, we see a cross-section with four atmospheric river rapids, here, 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 and here. The east-west component of the winds indicates the westward flow once the air reaches the barrier of the Greenland terrain. The gray isolines are pseudo-adiabatic potential temperatures, or moist isentropes, that when inclined upward from horizontal, indicate buoyancy from the heat release by condensation. Maximum upward vertical velocities occur from the forced terrain uplift from coastal mountains. Over the ice sheet, the moist isentropes incline more steeply than the dry isentropes, indicating the condensational buoyancy generation that combines with terrain forced uplift. So that's two uplift mechanisms forced uplift by the Greenland terrain, and buoyancy generation from condensation and the fallout of rainfall, the latter an irreversible process. The updraft rapids become disturbed by downward propagating gravity waves in the lee of coastal mountains. The gravity waves, aka mountain waves, propagate vertically more than three times the height of the ice sheet and coastal terrain. Once the ice sheet topographic rise flattens out, a downdraft area and downward gravity wave appears from mass conservation. In other words, from gravity wave reflection against the stably stratified top of the atmosphere, 10 kilometers above. Yet further downstream, where the ice sheet topography begins rising again, updrafts appear once again, followed by downdrafts, further illustrating the gravity wave oscillations. Downdraft areas appear only where the surface slope decreases over the ice sheet, consistent with orographic precipitation theory. This north south profile indicates intense up and downdrafts from the effect of the flow being forced up along coastal mountains and up the ice sheet. CARA data include areas of relative humidity above 100%. This is supersaturation of the air. Underneath the strong updrafts, areas of insane amounts of rainfall appear in the CARA data, more than a foot deep of rainfall in a single day. Observed rainfall rates increase with elevation, confirming the combined forced topographic and buoyant uplift is generating rainfall. The flow forcing heat and moisture onto the ice sheet produced three hourly rainfall rates above 90 millimeters, peaking at 750 meters elevation on the Kasimut lobe of the southern ice sheet, again coinciding with large-scale uplift of the atmosphere. The thermal impact of rainfall is heating the snow internally when the rainfall rate is high eroding the so-called cold content of the snow, making the ice sheet more prone to melting because less heat is later required to bring the temperature up to the melting point. The flooding quickly drains into the ice sheet, heating the ice internally, 
which has an ice softening effect, hastening the so-called thermal collapse of the ice sheet while hydrofracturing the ice. Both processes are among a long list of factors not yet encoded in ice sheet models used to project future sea level rise. Weather and climate extremes are the hallmark of intensifying climate destabilization driven by excess atmospheric greenhouse gases. The Arctic is heating up faster than the globe, causing a wavier and more slowly moving jet stream producing weather mayhem to the south of the Arctic. Stuck atmospheric waves across North America, Europe, Asia, that produce regional heat waves, extreme rainfall, even heavy snowfall have become a hallmark of Arctic warming faster than the rest of the globe. The warming Greenland ice sheet continues its approach to its tipping point threshold of viability. The more we can reduce carbon emissions, the more we can get into carbon dioxide removal at scale, the slower this disaster will be forced upon us.